Hey YouTube, this is Alice at Wonderland Speaks. It's in the morning, I'm trying to figure out what I want for breakfast, but I knew I had to uh, fry up some bacon. I like to fry up um, whatever I have in there and then just have it on hand, like I do for a lot of things. So this is no exception. So I'm gonna put this bacon back in the oven and let it finish cooking. And let's see, what else am I doing? I've got some cut up apples. Actually, I got some bacon left. And I've got some, um, got my, my protein shake here. Um, let's see. I think I think I'm gonna fix uh I don't even think I want eggs. Because I always wind up not eating them anyway. So I think I'm just gonna make I think we're gonna make a pancake. And have uh, pancakes. I don't even think I want anything in them. I don't think. But we'll see. And this is what happens when you're doing too much. I burned my bacon. Ah. Shoot. Look at that. Now some would say, well, let's not burn. Eh. It's a little too well cooked for me. <coughs> so, oh well. I'll be able to salvage um, most of it. See, that's what happens when you're doing too much. I was in there working on something else, knowing that this only needed maybe another minute or two. But I went in there and got the... Doing something else. I'll be able to salvage most of this. I have maybe three more pieces that I need to put in there. I was going to fry some potatoes, but i tell you what I was in there doing. I was in there thinking about, I haven't done a, a Ozempic update in a long time. So that's what I was in there doing. I'm trying to write down where I'm at versus uh, where I was. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these other, what I have left here. Yeah, shoot, I hate that. Cause I really don't like my bacon that well done. I mean, I'll be able to um, maybe use it for something else, maybe. Probably. I don't know. But that's a life lesson in uh, doing too much. Okay, so. Okay. So. Put those in there. Turn my eye on now. Let it get warm enough. And I'll be right back. So I'm going to use a little Pam. Spray my skillet. Even though, yes, this is a Teflon skillet. And it's what is considered non-stick. But I'm old school. I don't, I don't necessarily trust that. I was really trying to see, was it something else I wanted to, uh, did I want to just make a plain pancake? And you know, it's funny because I can remember all those years ago, I used to work in a restaurant and I would open up. So I would come in like 5.15 a.m. and I would always fix one pancake. 
and I'll, I would kind of eat on it while I was getting things set up. That means, because uh, at that time I was a server, so I was making sure the tables were wiped down, even though everybody has their job and all that's supposed to be done. I was just kind of wiping down everything, getting everything set up, making sure all the tables had all the setups on it, meaning salt, pepper, any condiments or what have you. Now, now did you hear that? That is, that's the oven. That's what happens when you put, when you put something in the oven, like a, a, a cookie sheet, and it is, uh, and the heat from the oven, because I've got the oven on 405, so it will, um, when it reaches that 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 heat level, whatever that may be, depending on what's in there, generally a a cookie sheet like that will um, uh, get real hot. And as soon as it gets real hot, you'll hear that pan pop like that. And what happens at that point is the pan will warp, so to speak. It'll kind of get out of line. Kind of. Yeah. So, now this was actually, um, this was a batter I made the other day. And I, um, all I did was put it up. Now, even though I know this shouldn't be brown on the bottom, when this, when this, when the bubble, when this bubbles up on the top, then it's time to flip. Now, sometimes your skillet will be too high and it'll still burn on the bottom, which is usually why I don't eat the first one. See, that's kind of like perfect. Mm. You see that smoke? Yeah, this pan in here is warped. Now you might say, well, why didn't you just fry that bacon on top of the stove? You know why? I stopped doing that, I don't know, decades ago. Like I said, so much of what I do at home has to do with what I learned in the restaurant or uh, commercial kitchen. This is just easier because in those kind of places, you cook in such bulk that you learn ways to do things simpler. And for me, it makes a lot more sense for me to I used to do it in a microwave, but uh, I get tired of cleaning it when I mess it up like that. So what I've been doing, and I just started doing this maybe last year, I just take and put it on a cookie sheet and just fry up probably a half a pack. And then I'll put it, then I'll put it um, on a paper towel to get some of the grease off of it. And then... I'll, um, now what I'm doing here is cripping off these ends that got burned. Because I'd be lying if I said I'm going to eat it anyway. Because I won't. Okay. See, this is what you can do to check. Some people would do it on the top, but I'm, I'm very much one of those people who uh, appearance is a big deal to me, how something looks. So, 
I turned my skillet off. I've got my butter right here, which I keep on the counter because I like my butter to be room temperature as opposed to, as opposed to uh, sticking it in the microwave or, or even so, um, um, So, I'm going to take a couple pieces of bacon, and this will be my breakfast slash lunch. Okay, just took this out of the oven. As you can see, the ends are a lot thinner than the base part, which means it's not going to cook even. That's what that means. It's not going to cook even. So it just means that's something you really got to watch if you don't want it to burn because it's going to burn. And again, that's something when you're buying your bacon, you can look at and see. Yeah, I'm one of those people when I go to the grocery store and I'm buying bacon, I look at, you know, you flip the pack over and you look at that bottom piece. And yes, I know that doesn't always tell the story because sometimes that can be tricky. But most of the time, it's pretty accurate, so I'm okay with that. I kind of like my bacon um, chewy. So now, what I'm going to do here is, I like a little honey, a little honey on my, come on, I'm not out, oh there it is, just a little, even though I find this to be the best, the best honey, so I get it from Kroger, which here is called Smith's, but um, this one, <clears throat> this is, let's see, this is a 24 ounce, and depending on you and how much honey you use, well, sometimes I'll use it every day, and sometimes I might not use it for weeks. But it'll last about six months. So it's, it's, Kroger had these on sale for uh, buy one, get one, kind of. They had them tied up together. So I got two of these, and this is 40 ounces. 40 ounces of honey, that's very expensive. But I got this for 20, I think $24, and I got two of these. So that's like $12, um, $12 uh, for each one of these. Now this being 24 ounce, I paid like eight, $9 for this. That's usually the price for 24 ounces. So like I said, that sounds like a lot, but it does last quite a while. So as I said, here's my breakfast. I got my one pancake. That uh, white powder you saw, that's a powdered sugar, but also I've got cinnamon in it. Um, and uh, I've got some scrambled eggs and bacon. That's my breakfast. <laughs>